For many Americans, the northernmost borough in New York City, the Bronx, symbolized decline and decay, especially in the early 70s when the slogan, The Bronx is Burning, appeared over images of the South Bronx. But a recently published article in the American Prospect highlights how the Bronx is turning around and becoming a safer and more stable place as a result of new businesses and investments in the borough. Will this be enough to help all the residents of the Bronx? To answer that question, we're now joined by Harold Meyerson, the executive editor of the American Prospect, who wrote the article, and by Bronx Council member Richie Torres, who represents the Central Bronx. Welcome, both of you. It's a pleasure to have you guys yeah, here. Good to be here. Now, Harold, uh, in your article, you write that the Bronx is experiencing a version of the real estate boom that, that other parts of the city have already experienced. Give us some examples of that. Well, at the very southern end of the Bronx, where there are a lot of now long abandoned factories, uh, you're beginning to see development. Uh, Silver Cup Studios uh, is opening a, a studio there, expanding from their place in Queens. Uh, Fresh Direct is uh, going to build an immense warehouse. And you're beginning to see some slightly high rise, about 25 stories. Uh, market rate uh, apartments going up right on the Harlem River. So mm. on the one hand, you have that. On the other hand, I'm not convinced this spreads much beyond the border of uh, uh, very much into the Bronx. There's a word riparian, which describes an ecology that is specific to the riverbank. Uh -huh. And I, I think <laughs> we're seeing this in the Bronx now. I, I think there are real reasons why this can only spread so far. Uh, the, the rate of poverty there is still grotesquely high. Not only higher than the rest of New York, but higher than just about any place in the United States. And it's that, one of the poorest urban districts in the country, it right? Is, it is the poor, yeah. the, the Southern Bronx Congressional District has had the highest poverty rate now for a good 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. That's higher than the Mississippi Delta. And you don't think this kind of uh, uh, proto-gentrification is going to spread geographically or economically to, to the different economic uh, levels? Well, I mean, there are, real, there are real impediments to that. There was a poll in the New York Times that said 36% of Bronx residents had, there were moments in the last year when they didn't have enough money to feed their families. Mm. Uh, there's really a pervasive level of poverty there that's a real impediment in, in, until we get, you know, significantly higher minimum wages and, and investment in the public infrastructure. So, uh, Council Member, do you agree with Harold about that? Do you think that the Bronx can't become the next Brooklyn? It's hard to say. I mean, there are a few factors conspiring against gentrification. One is the Bronx has the highest density of public housing development, which but is so by Brooklyn. definition. But in the South Bronx in particular, you have a massive density. Uh, Brooklyn is a much larger borough than the Bronx, mm. and, and public housing by definition is ungentrifiable. And as Harold pointed out, we do have persistently the highest rates of poverty. Uh, you know, the Bronx is probably ground zero for racially concentrated poverty here in New York City. Um, you know, we are experiencing an affordability crisis, but ours has more less to do with rent and more to do with income as a share of rent. We are the most rent burdened borough in New York City. But aren't um, affordable housing units being built in the Bronx yeah. even as we speak? Well, you know, the mayor is going to create um, 80,000 units and preserve 120,000 units over the next 10 years. You know, one of the criticisms of the plan is that most of the units we're creating is unaffordable to the average Bronx residents. So affordability is based on a formula known as area median income. 50% uh, of AMI is about $40,000 a year. And 40,000 is double the median income in my district, which is 20,000. So Harold, you began to talk about what can be done to turn this around. Give us some examples of what could be done. Well, I, I think the, the, the councilman just alluded to uh, uh, some of the fundamental problems. You know, it's not that the Bronx has like a lower rate of of labor force participation or, or, or a rate of unemployment that is that much higher than the rest. It's that, you know, the, these folks are concentrated in, the, you know, the really bottom paying jobs. And as, as the councilman has, has argued for uh, pretty much everywhere he goes, also uh, restoring some more vibrancy to, uh, to the public institutions of the Bronx. What does that mean? What does that mean, councilman? Well, look, I mean, in addition to the private affordable housing stock, you know, what's distinctive about New York City is that we have these great public institutions, these safety net institutions mm -hmm. that serve the poorest New Yorkers in our city. So you have the public housing stock that's managed by the New York City Housing Authority, NYCHA, or the public hospital system, which is managed by HHC and serves the largest population of undocumented mm -hmm. immigrants, about 500,000, and as well as millions of poor New Yorkers. Those two institutions are caught in a financial death spiral. And if well, those you know, institutions that's... disappear, 
our city is going to become unlivable. For you the know, both of, of you have talked about more public investment for yeah. the Bronx, but what's the likelihood of that? Uh, is the state going to give more money to, to the Bronx? Is the federal government, especially if the, if the Republicans can uh, continue to hold both houses of Congress and they win the White House? Look, I, we're right. making, I think the mayor and the city council are making a valiant effort to address deeply rooted inequality. But there's a limit to what we can do without more cooperation from Albany and more investment from Washington. Okay. So what do you see? Where do you see the Bronx 10 years from now? Not your hope, but your, your guess. It's hard to say. Um, I think as a policymaker, we have to assume that the wave of gentrification is going to sweep the city. Uh, and so one thing that we're pushing for is mandatory inclusionary zoning. If you're a developer and you're seeking a rezoning in the city of New York, no matter where you are, you will be required to create a percentage of affordable housing. So we, we're, the goal is to create a stock of permanently affordable housing that can survive in the face of gentrification. That should be the assumption of public policy. All right, Councilman Harold, thank you both so much. Thank you.